assessing someone's capacity to make a decision. Before anyone can act or make a decision on behalf of someone else, they must establish that the person lacks the capacity to make that decision. The Act makes it very, very clear that um, the way you decide upon someone's capacity is not based upon their disability, so just because someone has a learning disability doesn't mean they can't make decisions, it must be based upon their ability to make a pati that particular decision at that particular time. The Mental Capacity Act says that someone who lacks capacity cannot do one or more of the following four things. Understand information given to them, retain that information long enough to be able to make a decision, weigh up the information available to make a decision, or is unable to communicate that decision. There were lots of capacity assessments done with James for, for different issues. There were issues to do with looking after his money, whether to start on the anti-dementia drugs, um, and for various medical procedures that needed to take place. But each, each assessment was a separate assessment based upon that decision that needed to be made. And usually I would meet with um, James on an individual basis and first of all talk through with him what, what was going to happen, into, what was wanting to be done in terms of perhaps starting on the medication. Um, that might have been done in conjunction with some other people who had some knowledge about um, who the decision maker would have been, so perhaps the psychiatrist. Um, so making sure he had all the information and then checking out his understanding as to whether or not he understood um, about taking the medication, what the consequences of that might be, what the consequences of not taking the medication would be, and to just check out his general level of understanding. And generally I would go back after a period of time to check whether he'd retain that information. One of the key issues is around when people's memory deteriorates quite significantly. Part of the Act talks about being able to retain the information for as long as necessary, um, and that was one of the key issues um, that James had difficulty with. I think in the early stages of um, James's dementia, there were still lots of decisions he could make. Um, so um, some reasonably small medical decisions, such as perhaps have a blood test. I think as time went on, the more complex a decision, the more likely it is they will struggle to make that decision. I think it does emphasise how much you've still got to check that out at, at every stage. What does it say here? I received time of day, effect of medication and environment and may all affect a person's capacity to make a decision. When is the right time for him to make a decision? We won't ask Mitchell to make a decision if Mitchell is stressed. He would just not been able to do that for us. So if I'm going to ask Mitchell to do something, perhaps what we'll do is like in the morning when he wakes up, which is a good time, we'll say, you know, Mitch, this is what we're gonna do. It's about the film, and like last night I told him, he knew when you were coming, because I asked him, would that be okay for us to do the filming? And he said, yes, that was great. Last night I reminded him, Mitch, we're going to do, and he was very excited about that, and I said, great. So I got in again this morning, he woke up this morning, I said, put your alarm on so we can get ready, so we'll be prepared. And he woke up and he said, good morning, and I thought, mm, he's happy. So, so we know the times that we can effectively ask Mitchell to make a decision. Family carers have in-depth knowledge of the ways their relative communicates a decision that is helpful in assessing capacity. I said, Mitch, would you really like to make your first communion? And he said to me, yes. He has a way of speaking that when you ask him questions and he, and he says yes, there's a hiss in it. And that means to me it's really important because otherwise he'll just say yeah. And I'll know that he's not as enthusiastic. But with Mitchell, because his language was so limited and he had this drawing, so what we did is, is this was how we were able to determine. And there were just really colours, pictures that he coloured. And I think merely by the fact that he coloured these pictures in, that was sufficient in his own way to say, well, yes, he'd like to do it. And it was a really, really special occasion when that happened. And I think also for Mitchell, the fact that we have we decided to help him and he saw that happen, that's really encouraged him. If you're 
involved, such as a social worker, in assessing someone's capacity to make a decision, you really need to ensure that you involve a family carer as much as possible in supporting the person to make the decision, in understanding what the decision is all about, in, if, the, if perhaps an individual has difficulties uh, with verbal communication, to ask, involve the family carer to help the person communicate their decision, uh, communicate with the person, assessing their capacity, to ask the family carer, um, for example, is, are other forms of communication more appropriate to use, perhaps through picture symbols or gestures or different, different forms of communication, um, what the needs of the individual are to get to know them really well, particularly for important decisions. It's important that professionals really get the views of family carers around a person's ability to make a decision and to involve them as much as possible in assessing the person's capacity. And the, the Act and the Code of Practice explain how to do that. Yeah. That's it. You said, I am thirsty. If this film has raised issues that you would like to talk about, the Family Carer Support Service will try to help. You can telephone them on 0117 906 1751 or email familycarersupport at hft.org.uk.